And Mark New sat down with Fetch Robotics CEO Melanie Wise to find out more about her vision of how robots will transform the workplace. Mark began by asking her how workers at various companies react when their new colleague turns out to be a Fetch robot. When you look at the, the deployments we do have with uh, customers today, usually there is some initial worry uh, around the robot coming in and taking their job. But typically by day three, pretty much everyone's like, yes, robots, they're awesome. And they, they give them nicknames, pups, or they give them uh, superhero names. So at, at RK Logistics, I think the most popular name is Batman. You know, they want to feel like it's personalized. It's their robot. And so all of those things factor into how people perceive this, this robot as a teammate to develop a, a relationship with the robot. Tell me about some of those design principles yeah. that you're thinking about what a worker is looking yeah. at the robots. First, light colors. So uh, the robot doesn't feel aggressive. People associate aggression with certain colors, and so we stay away from those colors. The robot is diminutive in status, or it, it's not 100% imposing. When robots are taller than people, people actually feel like it's a peer instead of a subordinate, like a child or, or a puppy or something like that. We've put in some behaviors for the robot that it'll wait instead of kind of trying to dodge because people, they don't know what to expect, so they, they can develop an understanding of what the behavior is going to be. And then we never have robots talk. Robots should never talk. They make beeps. The minute a robot has words coming out of its speakers, uh, the gig is up everyone immediately assumes that it has person-like intelligence. You don't want people to think it's smart. No, no. The smarter a person perceives a robot to be, the more likely they are to feel uncomfortable around the robot and the less likely they are to help that robot. When we look at how people interact with the robot, it's not just their physical interaction, it's also their emotional interaction. And a lot of that is how the robot makes them feel about themselves, uh, whether it makes them feel smart or stupid and you don't want a coworker feeling stupid it's the same with people you don't want to work with someone that makes you feel stupid do you yeah. i don't and so why would you want to work with a robot that makes you feel stupid so are you for artificial intelligence being installed in your robots uh so that's a very complicated question because our robots work in environments where safety is the predominant feature it's hard to prove that something is safe if it doesn't do it repeatedly. AI doesn't always have the tendency to do things repeatedly. Maybe in the future, if we have better ways of validating machine intelligence and these systems, I could see them becoming more and more part of the type of technology that we use. But when you do safety tests and things like that, you have to have a specific behavior. You can't have the robot deciding, you know, I'm going to act like this one day and this the other day. So it sounds like you're not opposed to it, but for your purposes right now, you want to keep things controlled and yes. not getting at too many variables. Right? You've seen some of the news with robots falling into fountains or running over toddlers. Those are, are scary things. We as a community of roboticists need to demonstrate to the public that these devices are safe. Do you think it's inevitable that robots will be replacing lots of jobs or tons of jobs? Technology always causes job displacement. It happened with typewriters. It happened with computers. It happened with cars. What we've seen through history is there's always a point where we struggle to train people to do the next jobs. Our robots have never replaced someone or gotten someone out of their job, largely because if you look at the United States, there's actually a labor shortage for these kind of jobs. Even if we start replacing people, we still need people to maintain the robots. We still need people to install the robots. We still need people to build the robots. The number of jobs that are going to be created are going to be higher paying, higher skilled jobs. And the question is, can someone transition from the job that is displaced to these higher skill, higher paying jobs? That is not a technology problem. That's a socio-political economic problem. Technology is going to continue to do this. And I don't understand personally why everyone is so worried about robots when this is 
This game is played out time and time and time and time again.